every semester I held class meetings with, with kids and I would read the pledge to them. And you have to believe me, the room was silent. It was just silent. This Vivian pledge was developed with a committee, but it's, it, I think it all stemmed around that 9-11. Uh, And Vivian decided, because she was a counselor in one of the city schools, I don't remember now which one, but so many of her kids wanted to transfer out to the community that she decided to go to, thinking she was an African-American woman, thinking that they needed an advocate um, and that she wasn't wrong in, in, in assuming that there wouldn't be as many African-Americans on staff at places like West High. So she came and she was assigned to West um, Thanks be to God. She was the most remarkable person. I, I love to see her first thing in the morning. But we were counselors together. She was a great help to me when I had questions. Um, she was always willing to, to give her input and her suggestions and encouragement. So we were just fast friends in terms of work. And when I had issues about students, or about this uh, class, uh, the school environment, whatever, I can go to her. We usually uh, got along very well. And that's how we knew each other. She was a team player. Um, when we would have, or I would have difficult situation to handle, she would brainstorm. In fact, the whole counseling department, we really had each other's backs. You know, that time period in there was so traumatic. But she helped me to understand um, how difficult this was for, for the kids who were who lived 25 miles away and were coming out to school, especially to a West High, where there were more BMWs, and, and I'm sure there still are, uh, on the parking lot than any place else. So their, their, their worlds could not have been more dramatically different. Right before Thanksgiving, Vivian called me at home one night and said that she had stage five cancer and she wasn't going to return to school. So she goes home one weekend and never comes back. She was a very private person who chose not to burden her friends for co or colleagues or her students with the gravity of her illness. I think it was her way to, of caring for us one last time. The thing she talked about um, that I still vividly remember was the girl that was pushed down the the stairs because she was wearing a hijab. I remember that happening to that poor girl and being so angry that that had happened. And a lot of the kids were really angry too. You know, it wasn't the masses that were doing it. It was some, yeah, one kid that did it, but, but that was the catalyst for something that turned out to be really good. What happened that day was pretty amazing because I, we went into the classroom teachers, we gave just a 30 second little thing and I said, please lead a discussion and then record what the kids say. And I took all those home that night um, and it over and over again. And I, I, it's been a lot of years, uh, but I will still tear up saying this, but over and over the kids said to me, this is not who we are. And I said, thank God, you know, thank God. But from my point to them, I want to know what you think about this, but then I want to know what do we do, you know, and it uh, must have come from 10 or 15 different classrooms. We need to write a pledge. We have to promise each other that we won't just look the other way because that's what happened here. Somebody pushed another student down the stairs, blaming them, obviously, for something for which they had no responsibility. This unity has plagued our worlds for the last two plus years, both on and off school grounds. So to ensure that our school environment is welcoming, inclusive, and respectful, we need to be intentional about preventing hate in our schools. Remembering Vivian's pledge, why it's essential, and how it applies to our world today is how we deliberately say we are better than this world and we want to make this community better.